Hi. Last week I talked about baptism. Uh, I talked about about a little bit of the history of baptism, about some of the spiritual background of baptism, that it represents the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. A little bit about how it was celebrated in the first century, that there was a connection between baptism and salvation that came about the third century. But what Baptists believe on this uh, was more delineated later on when the Baptist faith developed in the 16th, 16th century. And so uh, Baptists believe that um, baptism is a sign of our inner faith, a sign of our having accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. Therefore, we have something that we call believer's baptism. We, we don't baptize infants. We baptize those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, as the Philippian jailer did in Acts chapter 16. So that's what we believe, and we believe that it's a, it represents the death, the burial, and the resurrection of, the, of the, old, the old self having died, the new self being resurrected. In 1 Peter 3, chapter, uh, verse 21, it says, And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So Christ's resurrection is what saved us. This represents that. This is a symbol of what Christ did for us. Uh, I want to talk about a little bit about the practice of baptism and how it is sometimes is an obstacle to our faith. Um, in Acts 10, 48, it says, So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. So I want you to focus in on the word ordered. He ordered them to be baptized. Baptism is an act of obedience. Obedience to what Christ has called us to do, and that is to be baptized. Um, I, I mentioned last week about how, how baptism is a symbol of our faith. Uh, it's a sign of our salvation. Um, this week, I want to talk more about the practical aspects of baptism in the church and how we celebrate this. Like anything having to do with our Christian faith, it sometimes gets twisted. It sometimes gets, uh, it, it becomes something that it was not intended to be. In the Baptist church, we have two ordinances. We have the ordinance of baptism and the ordinance of communion. That means that we believe that these two rituals are vital to our practice as Christians in worship. It also means that both of these are an act of obedience. Jesus commanded in Matthew 28, the Great Commission, he says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Those are the words of Jesus, the command of Jesus to be baptized. Now, we don't have any evidence that Jesus ever baptized anybody. In fact, we most believe that Jesus did not baptize, but rather he taught baptism so that the apostolic church, the early disciples, would then go out and begin baptizing others. Mark 16, verse 16 says, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Now, some congregations believe that you are not truly saved until you have also been baptized. Yet the Apostle Paul strictly warns us against uh, seeking salvation by works. And I think that uh, the act of baptism could be construed, it is a very important ritual that we do, but if we believe that baptism or that salvation comes through that baptism, I think we are focusing upon an act of works rather than the act of faith. It is an act of obedience, however. It, it's also important to understand that baptism is not to be coerced. It's easy for parents sometimes to, to fall into that trap of, of pushing their children toward, the, toward uh, being baptized. They say, well, you're old enough now. You're 12 years old. It's time for you to get baptized. Let's go talk to the pastor. And so the kid is kind of twist, the kid's arm is twisted to, 
get baptized when they're really not ready to do so. Baptism also should not be about church membership. We should not be baptized so that we can become a church member, but rather we become a church member because we were baptized. There's a difference there, if you notice. So our, our baptism is all about our relationship with Jesus Christ, not about the relationship with the church. While baptism shouldn't be coerced, it should be encouraged and made an important priority. It should be celebrated. We had a speaker up at Camp Moses Merrill last week to the pastor's conference, and he talked about uh, no polite golf applause at baptisms. In other words, when somebody gets baptized and we all sit back and we do this after they're baptized, and he says, it deserves a hoop and a holler. He says, we need to celebrate it. He was talking about a backyard barbecue after one of their baptisms at the church, and they went met over at people's house, and there was all these people there, and there was all this noise coming from this backyard, and the neighbors started to look, and they started to peek through the fence and going, thinking, man, there must be a wild party over there. It was a baptismal party. And so the people that were at the baptismal party began to share with the neighbors what was going on and told them how important it is when, when the new person comes into the kingdom of God and what a witness that was to those people. It's a celebration. It's something that we ought to look at with, with a, a deep appreciation, a deep desire, and to celebrate it with all it's worth. Baptism is about new life in Christ, and there's nothing greater to be celebrated than that. Thanks for listening today. I'll talk to you next week.